Here's a block sitting on a horizontal surface. The weight of the block acts downwards and, by Newton's third law, the surface provides an equal and opposite reaction upwards. Now watch what happens if I tilt the surface. The weight still acts vertically downwards, but the reaction tilts with the surface. Why is this? Well, the reaction acts at right angles to the surface. It is called a normal reaction. Does Newton's third law still apply? Yes, of course it does. To see what happens, we can resolve all the forces into components normal to and parallel with the surface. To see how this works, you need to tilt your head on one side, like so. When you look at things like this, it looks like the weight is acting down and to the right. In this view, the normal reaction balances the component of weight normal to the surface. However, the component of weight parallel with the surface isn't balanced, and, in accordance with Newton's second law, this means that the force will cause the block to accelerate in the direction of the force. OK, tilt your head back and look at things again, but this time from the normal point of view. You can see the force as normal to and parallel with the surface now tilt with the surface, and, what's more, that there's now a force acting to pull the block down the surface, so, as expected, the block slides. Now all that's great if you're playing with very slidey things like ice, but in the real world, things don't slide so easily. There's an additional force from friction, which generally stops things from sliding around. When I tilt the surface, friction acts in the opposite direction to the component of weight parallel with the surface. The magnitude of the frictional force is such that it exactly cancels out the accelerating force down the surface, so the block remains stationary. So far so good. But again in the real world, things are not so simple, because if I tilt the surface enough, the block eventually does start to slide. So what's going on here? Well, the friction grows to hold back the block, but it can only go so far. It's limited by how rough the surface contact is, and how big the normal reaction is. The roughness between the block and the surface is described by the coefficient of friction, which is usually written as the Greek letter mu. The frictional force can get as big as mu times the reaction, but no bigger. When the friction reaches this limit, and the limit is less than the component of weight down the surface, then the block starts to slide. Let's look at that again. Notice how, as the surface tilts, the normal reaction reduces. This means that not only is the component of weight down the surface increasing, but also that one of the components which determines the total frictional limit, i.e. the normal reaction, is decreasing. Well, that's the introduction, but guess what? Yep, things in the real world are not so simple. You see the forces shown here are not quite in the right place. The reaction acts through the point where the weight intersects the base of the block. So as I tilt the surface, the reaction moves forward. Now if the friction limit is reached while the weight arrow is still inside the base of the block, then the block will start to slide as before. However, if the friction limit is not reached, then as the surface is tilted more, the reaction hits a crisis point. You see, the reaction cannot act beyond the base of the block, but the weight can. When this happens, you have a moment about the edge of the block, and instead of sliding, the block starts to roll. Look at what happens to the friction and the reaction force as the block keeps rolling. It transfers from corner to corner. That's the theory, now use the iPad app to experiment for yourself.